Hey, what's up guys? One of the things I've been thinking about lately in terms of like bugging out and self-defense and concealed carry is how the color black is synonymous with deadly weapons, right? That and stainless. Anything that has reflectivity to it is glossy. If you see something glossy in someone's hands, if you see something catch the light in the middle of like a dark parking lot in someone's hands nearby, you don't go, oh, it must be his Rolex that he's holding in his hand and glinting at me. No, you think it's a knife, you think it's a gun. So that's why I've been thinking. Should, should more people be start to carry like FDE guns? And the answer is yeah, because all right, here's the thing. Say you've got a gun like this, it's the 19X, and it's got, you know, it's two different colors of FDE essentially, but it's one of those things, yeah, the shape screams gun, but most people aren't gonna concealed carry in an out a magnetic holster or outside the pants holster. No, that's, a, that's not how you conceal carry at all. This thing, if it protrudes out of your pants, like say you can just see that much of it, right? Especially against this color, it could be anything. More than just concealed carry, this would make an amazing bug out gun. Not just this gun, but any gun in FDE. For example, I think a really cool combination would be that Glock 19 and this kel Sub-2000 Gen 2, right? I've got both of them obviously in FDE, and I think the new Glock mags in particular, the new 20 rounders, they've got the 17 plus two or 19 plus one, I guess. Uh, if you think about this, look at that. You get effectively 20 rounds in a magazine, and it's more or less flush fitting. But more so than that, when this thing's collapsed, if this were to peek out of a duffel bag or something like that, especially say you have a bunch of just mute and earthy colors like this green shirt or like a brown belt, this doesn't look out of place. Yeah, there are black elements to it, but for the most part, to the, to the human eye, to the average observer, it doesn't look like anything. I mean, hell, if I saw this thing and I wasn't a gun person, I wouldn't think it was a firearm. What the hell is this? Exactly. Nobody would ever immediately recognize that as a firearm unless they themselves were into guns. And I think one of the benefits of wearing FDE or any color like that or having guns that color is it does what camouflage is supposed to do in nature, which is ironic because wearing camouflage in public does the exact opposite of what it does in nature. People see guys wearing camouflage, whether that's right or wrong, it's not important, it's how you're perceived, right? So they see this camouflage, they think, oh, that guy's either a prepper, he's a redneck, he's a hunter, he's military. They're gonna associate you with a dangerous individual right? And I'm not saying in everyday life, if I see some guy in a you know, camouflage jacket at Walmart, I'm like, I clench my gun and do a chamber check. No. What I'm saying is, if you're thinking of, in general, if, if you said, all right, you have to fight one of these two guys in the room to the death. You see a guy in a camouflage jacket with a thick beard, and you see another guy with horn rim glasses that are repaired with tape, and he's, and he's you know, got a uh, shirt tucked into a pair of khakis, you're going to pick the khaki guy, because he's the gray man in the situation. He looks less dangerous. And that's what this does, right? If you're wearing FDE or you're carrying FDE guns, you're trying to make yourself as unassuming looking as well as unnoticeable as, as possible. And I, I hate that buzzword gray man, but it does hold some merit. So imagine I've got this either tucked into a backpack or better yet, it's hanging on a sling and it's next to my waist, right? If I'm wearing similar muted colors, it's not going to immediately, especially a distance, register in someone's mind as firearm. It could be anything, right? Or hell, maybe they don't even notice it. And that's really the biggest advantage of it is. I mean, aside from the fact that, yeah, I love the way the FDE looks, because I like that, that whole muted khaki kind of look, but it's also really helpful in areas like where I live in South Carolina, where the soil is very sandy. There's usually a lot of brown leaves in the ground, and so it's an effective camouflage that doesn't scream, hey, I'm camouflage. Now, because this is a gun channel, I'm not gonna just sit here and rant for 15 minutes. I'm also gonna shoot some firearms. So let's head down range with a few of these pretty badass looking FDE guns, including this Caltech and this guy you've seen at SHOT Show, which is the Fab Arm STF-12 pump action 12 gauge shotgun. And uh, yeah, let's head down range and see how they both run. Two bloody great handfuls. I'm back guys. So this is the Caltech I talked about and here's the STF-12 from Italy from Fab Arm, and we're going to take them both for a spin against the plate rack. I think I'll run with the 12 gauge first, because why not? Alrighty. So, it's very similar in operation to a Remington 870, and uh, it's got the, uh, the safety located on the trigger guard as opposed to on the tank like a Mossberg, although it does, strangely enough, have a Mossberg style loading gate, so watch your fingers if you're loading this with a quickness. So, this is uh, from Fab Arm, 
has an, a, uh, a break on the end, which makes a big difference, and nice oversized safety latch. So let's uh, shoot some steel plates here, see how the old girl does. Get him out. Yeah, so it's not the most capacious firearm in the world, but it is a really, really reliable, really, really nice design. And that was actually buckshot I was just shooting. And this thing really, really curves the amount of recoil coming off a of buckshot. I think it's that really aggressive break on the end. And don't worry, I'm doing a full review on it in the near future, as well as a written review on it you'll be seeing in the next few months uh, as part of Athlon Outdoors publication syndication. So hey, also, so let me get back to the other guns we've got going on. First up, the kel -Tec. Here's that kel Sub-2000. It's got an innovative arms sound suppressor, a nine millimeter, with a Silencer Co. FDE suppressor cover that I put on there just to kind of mask the signature of the gun even further. And I've got some of the Glock 19X's 17 plus one round magazines. Let's see how this guy does. You've seen my review in the past. You know I'm a big fan. I've also got a Streamlight Prozac 1 on the end here that offers a little bit of illumination. It's making it a nice, effective home defense gun where you can actually illuminate your targets. So let's put some rounds down range and see how she runs. Oh yeah, this thing is a breeze to shoot. And if, for those of you out there who go, yeah, but pistol caliber carbines don't really offer any true advantages over a handgun, you're wrong. This is a vastly more accurate, vastly faster shooting system than any handgun. So I'm able to get on target. Swing and a miss. Pretty damn quick, even with the iron sights. Now if you toss an optic on here, it is lightning fast. And because I've got that nice capacious magazine, I still have like four rounds left in the mag. So we'll put them into that human shaped target as fast as I can. Clear? Clear. Awesome. And I mean, sure, that's 115 grain full metal jacket ammunition provided by Federal. And that's really, really, really about as loud as the gun's gonna get suppressed. But look how compact this thing is. And what's cool is it can share magazines. With one of my favorite pistols. This is a Glock 19X with an Osprey 45 sound suppressor provided by Silencer Shop. Firing 147 grain flat nose ammunition provided by Winchester. So let's see how these, these subsonic rounds go. And talking about saying about being incognito, this makes almost no noise. I'll put it around in the dirt first. It's like a movie pistol, right? As opposed to hitting the, the steel target. And as you can tell, it doesn't really affect the point of aim, point of impact by having the suppressor on there, which is actually unique. A lot of guns will have a dramatic shift in point of aim, point of impact with the addition of a sound suppressor. Sometimes it can be up to like eight or 10 MOA, which is enormous at long range, but still substantial at short. Let me clear this plate rack real fast. So I'll use the TLR-8 we put on there before, and I'll clear it with a laser. Without actually using the sights. And uh, I don't know if a, if, if a pistol laser really adheres to the whole gray man philosophy, but I do know that it's really fun to use. So I can kind of get a headshot in this guy. And hit the plate, hit the outer plate, hit the middle two plates, up, oh, up. Oh, it's really, really, really effortless to engage targets. I got one round left, so I'll do a little uh, center axis relock shot here, see if I can get the laser on. You still hit the target. So ultimately, if you're buying a new weapon, either a pistol, rifle, or whatever, specifically for the purpose of a bug out weapon or a survival gun, I would recommend you get it in something that's gonna blend into your natural surroundings. If you live in an urban area, maybe that's gray, right? If you live in somewhere that's tropical, maybe that's green. For me, living in some place like South Carolina where there's tons of browns and muted colors everywhere year round, FD just blends in with everything. It doesn't hurt that I also tend to wear a lot of khakis, whether that ends up being tactical pants or actual like work khakis, this color blends in very, very well. And it's not difficult to find a pair of work khakis that are the exact same color. Because ultimately, whatever helps you blend in the most can improve your survival chances. I mean, the easiest way to win a gunfight is to never be in one. 
Thanks, guys. Tell me what your thoughts are. And tell me if I'm completely off the mark, if I'm out of my mind, or tell me I'm a genius or somewhere in between. I don't care. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews. And please, if you can spare the dough, we really appreciate it if you head over to Patreon slash burst review and donate whatever you can to help promote us and keep us with the lights on here at burst review. Thanks, guys.